Just a reminder, if you have not already, make sure to get my new book, Profit Genius, which is now out and available on Amazon. And now to today's episode. Hey friend, welcome to the Inventory Genius Podcast, where we work together here to make you an inventory genius. We talk about profit, we talk about cash flow, and we definitely talk about your paycheck. Because at the end of the day, it's all related to your inventory. Let's go. Hello there, Inventory Genius family. I'm so excited that you're here and ready to listen to today's episode. I have a special episode for you today that was actually taped on another show. I was being interviewed by Andy, who has a fantastic coaching program on creating more sales. And I just loved the conversation so much, I asked her if I could share that conversation with my audience as well. So sit back and enjoy this conversation I had with Andy about how to sell differently. Welcome to the She Sells Differently podcast. So excited that you are here today. And I am really excited to have Sierra Stockland from the Inventory Genius podcast as my guest today. We have so many product makers and product-based businesses that listen to She Sells Differently. And if you are one of those listeners, you are going to want to tune in today because Sierra is the inventory genius and she helps so many of her clients with everything from profit and cash flow. And so if you struggle with that, or even if you don't think you struggle with that, you're going to want to tune in today. So welcome Sierra Stockland to the She Sells Differently podcast. Hi, Andy. So excited to be here. Yes. Thanks for taking time. So before we dive on in, can you share a little bit about your background and how you got started helping businesses with inventory and cash flow? Yeah. So I always say, you know, when I tell my story, I launched my first retail business in 2006, which is true, but I've been a small business owner since the age of 13 and even with inventory. So I had a theater business, which had no product or inventory, but then at the same time, I was also creating. So I've been a maker. I would knit these beautiful little sweaters and handbags and make beautiful jewelry. And I would just go door to door to little boutiques. And I'd walk up with my box of samples and say, hello, this is what I have. Can I talk to the owner? So I was doing that. Um, I had that brand, but my first formal brick and mortar was launched in 2006. It was a retail store and I built that, grew it and franchised it. We had 13 franchises around the country. And long story for another day, I ended up losing everything. So even my home after about a decade in the retail business. And it was at that time that I was forced to make a decision. I was literally on my couch, literally with a box of tissues. And I had gone from seven figure business, team of 12, corner office, warehouse, all these locations, so much to do to now nothing. So my kids were in school, my husband was at work, and there I was with nothing to lead, nothing to do. And I thought, what was that all for? And I had the opportunity to say, I can either sit here and cry, or I can build again, but do it differently this time. And so I chose the latter, thank the Lord. And so with that decision, I had to be introspective. A mentor of mine once told me, you know, Sierra, when things happen to you in life, and they will, hard things sometimes they're out of your control. Sometimes it's beyond you. And and really how we lost our business, which is a crazy story, really was of no fault of our own. But she said, but you always have to see what part of that you need to take responsibility for. And so as I sat there, I thought, you know what, part of this is on me and how I ran and operated my business. I was always building it from sales instead of profitability. I never focused on the numbers. I just focused on selling, merchandising, building, growing. I wanted the seven-figure business, and I had no idea about all the numbers underneath it. And so I said, okay, what if this time I said, I'm going to build from a profitable place. I'm going to take a paycheck from day one. I will not buy into the myth that you can't be profitable for five years. I just think that's silly. I'm going to build it, launch it, grow it, and prove to myself that I can do this different. And so I did. I built and launched, grew a profitable business, and sold it within 18 months. And through that, started meeting with inventory-based businesses all over the country that had the same questions I had had. How much inventory should I have? I don't understand financials. What do I do with this debt? And I knew the answers because I had done a lot of great things. And so I started consulting and coaching with them. Never thought that that's what I would end up doing. I had no idea that I would do anything like that, but I loved it. I loved answering questions and helping people succeed. And that's how the Inventory Genius was born. Whoa. 
Like what a story of <laughs> resiliency. <a> <laughs> that is a story of resiliency if I've ever heard one. Like that's incredible. You have a like you have a powerful story and testimony in that. So yeah, thanks for sharing. So I was I was gonna ask like what inspired you to focus on inventory management, but I mean you just outlined it. If if you're ever gonna be inspired, I mean that's gonna inspire you and, and motivate you. So for my listeners that a lot of them have inventory businesses. Can you explain what effective inventory management looks like and why it's crucial for business success? Yeah. So if you sell any type of product, you have inventory. I was just speaking with an owner that has a supply business. So they have nuts, bolts, metal, sheeting, metal, like inventory. My dad had a glass business. He had inventory, right? We think of inventory a lot of times, like beautiful things that we sell or, you know, candles in our shop, but inventory can be raw materials. If you're a maker, that's your inventory. And so you have to understand that inventory is directly tied to cash flow and profitability. And if you don't understand the margins with your inventory, you'll always be behind the eight ball with cash management, debt, all of those pieces. I didn't understand that. I remember towards the end of my retail part of my story, I finally found someone who I say is my Sierra. Like he was, he was who I am to people now. Randy came in. I wish I had found him at the beginning and he came a little too late in the journey and I was already on the, on the path of losing everything, but he taught me so many things. And I remember a conversation we had, we were sitting down. And he said, Sierra, just because you buy something for five and sell it for 10 doesn't mean that you have $5. And I was like, wait a second. Yes, it does. And he's like, no, it doesn't. Because it costs you a dollar to turn the lights on, $2 to hire people, $3 for marketing. You're already behind. And I was like, whoa, that's amazing. Why did I not know this sooner? So for your audience that has inventory, whether it's raw materials or, or finished goods, You have to understand that the excess between the sales and the cost of those sales is what keeps your business heart beating. And if you don't have enough, you will die. Yes. So (laughs) I love the direct, like just, yes, so true. So what are some, some of the common mistakes that you see businesses make when it comes to managing their inventory? Managing it with emotion. Mm. first thing, right? Like, I love this product, but I mean, I love it and everyone will love it. And so I just can't sell it at a discount and I can't get rid of it. And I'm just going to keep pushing it. Your customers tell you what they want with their wallet. They Mm. like to talk a lot. I mean, I'll tell you, I had brick and mortar stores. They'd come into the counter. Oh my goodness. If you carried this, if you carried that, and I would bring it in because I would buy off of emotion. And then I'm like, hello, where'd you all go? Right. Right. (laughs) They tell you what they want with their wallet. If they're not buying something, they're not going to start buying something. And so a lot of entrepreneurs manage with their emotions. Mm. I think not understanding or grasping the severity of the importance of focusing on numbers. I talk to so many entrepreneurs that will laugh and kind of giggle and be like, I'm just a hot mess. I just can't do it. Or like, oh, I'm not good at my numbers. And I'm like, stop playing store with your store. This is not funny. Like you've invested your life savings. You're working for free. You've invested your family's, you know, welfare into this business. It's not a game and you can get out of hot mess mode. You can be confident with your numbers. It doesn't mean you have to be an accountant or that you have to look at them and think about them all the time, but you have to understand what are the core numbers in my business? We call them KPIs. So Mm -hmm. key performance indicators. What are the KPIs that are non-negotiable that you are so fixated on? That anyone, I could get on the phone with you and say, tell me your margin. You're like, oh, I've got my margin. I know that, right? That's super important. And so that's the second thing is just not understanding that this isn't an option. If you want to run a business, you need to be the boss of your numbers. End of story. Yes, so true. And even if you are not running a brick and mortar, if you are a product maker, and this is something I stress with my clients that you need to have those numbers. You need to know them and you need to be so fixated on them. I love that you use that word that this is not a hobby, you know, yeah. that you're, you're not just doing this for fun, that this is something that you want, you want to make sure that you're, you're diligent about. And so it's the, yeah. it's the same principle. So yep. can you share some specific strategies that entrepreneurs or small business owners can implement that they can use to optimize their inventory? Yeah. 
So in my programs, I use a profit roadmap that I've created. It's a framework that works really successfully with any size business, no matter where you're at in the journey. And this framework says, if I want to get from financially stressed to financially free, here's the path that I take. So we just went to Louisville for a race. We are triathletes in my family. And so we went to a race last weekend. And the first thing we did when we got in the car is punch in the location in our GPS, right? So we could have tried to get to this location on our own. And we kind of know, you know, take 65, you'll get to Louisville. And then we could have muddled around. Or we can just punch it in and take the shortest route without the car accidents, the scenic route, whatever we wanted to do, right? We need to do that with our business too. So the first strategy is deciding what does financial freedom look like for you and your business? What does success look like at the end of the journey? And then backing into that and creating a, a roadmap or a profit roadmap for how to get there. And then I think the second strategy is just a simple business budget. And don't let that make your skin crawl. People are like, I can't live by a budget. Well, you have to if you want to be profitable. <laughs> so in a budget, super simple. It's just a math problem. This minus that equals this. And if that is too much, and it doesn't give you enough this, then you have to rework the math problem. So a lot of times I'll talk to someone and they'll say, you know, I just keep doing all these things and I just, I don't understand. Like there's no money at the end of the day. It's a math problem. We don't like it to be that simple, but it truly is, right? The sales minus the cost of those sales minus what it costs to run the business leaves us either in a deficit or in a positive place, right? And if we don't like where it's leaving us, we have to fix one of those numbers. So just creating a super simple budget that outlines your sales goal, what your product costs you, how much it costs to run, and then what's what's left at the end of the day will get you so much farther down the road than the majority of those around you. Yes. And it's so interesting how we overcomplicate things yeah. so often, whether we have a business background or not, we just, we tend to overcomplicate things and it's really so much more simple than we make it out to be. And I think we overcomplicate things actually because we want a quick fix mm. because the most simple way is usually hard. Yeah. So the math problem is not difficult to equate. It's difficult to execute on. Because it means I have to say no to things. It means I have to sell inventory at a discount because I need to get rid of that old stale stock, right? So a lot of times simplicity is difficult and complexity makes us feel like we're doing things. And so we like to overcomplicate things because then we feel important. We feel busy. We feel like we're moving, right? And simplicity is often, you know, here's what it is. It's black and white. Yes or no. That's actually very insightful. Yeah, very true. So, you know, as we talk about market changes and things like that, how can businesses adapt inventory strategies with market changes and unexpected disruptions? Yeah, I think it goes back to simple. This is part of the stop, one of the stops on my roadmap that I go through with clients, um, simplifying. So I love to give the illustration of vodka lemonade. I bought my husband tickets to a Billy Joel concert at Notre Dame a couple of years ago. And I felt like, I mean, I still think that's going to be the best gift I ever get. I'm not a good gift giver. <laughs> so I'm like, I, I scored with that one. And so we got to the concert, we walk up to the stadium and I'm thinking, okay, we're going to grab a couple drinks and some snacks and get ready. And then we get up there and of course it's a stadium. So they sell beer and I don't like beer. I just not my jam. So I'm like, well, that's disappointing. I guess I'll have to have water or something, you know, whatever. And then I look over and I see a vodka lemonade stand. I was like, perfect. That would be a fun drink. I will get that. So I head on over to this long line and I thought this is an illustration I can use with my clients. They sold one product, one size, one price point over and over and over again. And we could say, okay, that's boring because we want to sell spritzers and we want to sell slushies and we want to sell popcorn. Nope. They sold one product. It was vodka lemonade. And I think as we're adapting to what's happening in the market, the entrepreneurs that have a boring business model are most often the profitable ones, right? Because exciting things are risky. So if we bring in this line, if we try this size, if we bring in this product brand, whatever it looks like, right? Now, that doesn't mean we don't innovate, we don't try things. But I would say the vast majority of the time, we've way overcomplicated our business model too. And our customers are like, I don't even know what you sell. And I guarantee you, every single person in that line knew this is vodka lemonade. If you don't like vodka lemonade, that's fine because there's plenty of other places for you. But if you're in this line, this is what you're getting this price, this size, right? And so it actually drew more customers than it would have if they had 10 product options. 
And so think about what is your vodka lemonade? Like, what's the thing that you can market, you can advertise, you know exactly who the avatar is, you know what to charge, you know your profit margins on it. And then you just sell the bajitis out of that. Mm-hmm. That's your thing. Yeah. Yeah. I've also heard it said a confused mind says no. And I think that that goes along with that because yeah, when we offer the consumer so many different options, they get overwhelmed. And, you know, that's to your point that when we give them, here's your option. I mean, here's, here's what we have to sell. Yep. Sometimes they don't like choice, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Simplifying is so much better. Yes. Yeah. So how can my listeners begin to shift their mindset and practice practices to see immediate improvements in what they're doing with, with their inventory? Yeah, I think I want them to just stop for a minute and ask themselves this question. Am I interested or committed to success with my business? Because everybody that comes to me is interested in getting rid of debt, making money, taking a paycheck. They're all interested, right? But the people that follow through and do the work are the ones that are committed, meaning that they will do what is inconvenient. They'll do things that they're like, I've I've had clients say, when you told me to do that, Sierra, I was like, you're nuts, but I paid you. And so I trusted you and I did it and look where I am, right? Commitment means that you're willing to do what's inconvenient and confusing perhaps to you in the moment, but you're going to go all the way with it. So I think they need to ask themselves, am I interested in actually having a profitable business or am I just, you know, or am I committed? I mean, or am I just interested? Cause it sounds nice. And I'd like that because once you answer that question, then it gives you the direction to go. Right. Cause if you say, no, I am committed. Okay. If I'm committed, where are there opportunities for growth? I don't like to say weaknesses. I like to say opportunities for growth, right? So if they say like, I don't understand numbers, great. I didn't either, but I do now, right? Mm -hmm. Like there are experts that can help you. There's tools and tips for you. Same thing with what you do, Andy, you help with selling. So if they say I am committed, but selling is just really difficult for me. Great. Then let's find you a resource and let's get you in front of someone that can help you with that opportunity for growth. So I think asking themselves that will help them then make those steps and decisions that they need to do to move forward. Yeah. And I think the mindset shift is the first step, right? Yeah. And I know that there are some people listening to this podcast that they have heard some of the things that you have said and they are saying to themselves, oh, like they're feeling convicted about their business right now. And they're thinking, I need Sierra's help. And so if there are listeners out there and they're thinking, I need to learn from Sierra, what would be the first step for them of how they can reach out to you or even just get in touch with you and find out more about the inventory genius? Yeah. So um, I would just go to my website, sierrastockland.com. And I have a really fun quiz right there on the page. So just click on let's get started and it will get you into that quiz. We all love taking a quiz. Let's figure out where you're at. What's the pain point that you have right now when it comes to anything numbers, take that quiz, and then it will guide you and direct you into where you can best fit working with me and how I can help you where you're at and where we can get you. Awesome. And I will put that all in the show notes. So anyone that is listening can just click that and go take that quiz. Anything else that you would like to share with our listeners before we wrap up? Yeah, I want to offer hope because I would say the vast majority of you that are listening are in debt, are overwhelmed, feel like you've really screwed up when it comes to cash and money. You've kept investing. You haven't paid yourself. I was there. Like, I know what that feels like. So there's no place for you to have shame, guilt, or that imposter syndrome of like, I look successful, but behind the scenes, I'm totally freaking out. We're all there. We've all been there, right? But I have seen the transformation in women just like you that have come to me and said, here's where I'm at. In fact, let me give you a story because I think this would help to inspire. So I had a client, we got on a consult call. And she said, I'm going to cry. And I was like, that's okay. Me too. I'm a crier. So if you guys work with me, you know, most likely I'll shed tears over your business also. So I said, it's okay. We'll cry together. So she was telling me like, here's where I'm at. And I have so much business debt. She outlined and she's like, nobody knows, not even my husband. I have kept this secret and it is such a heavy burden. 
And so she went through everything and she's like, would you take me on as a client? I'm like, absolutely. Give me a big old mess. We'll fix it, right? Everything in my mind is fixable. Sometimes the outcome isn't what we're anticipating, but everything can be fixed. So we started working together. I went to visit her for her VIP day, which is part of my program. So I went on site and we worked through everything. And she's like, are you going to fire me now? Like now that you've actually seen it, it's like she thought I didn't believe how messy it was. I knew. I said, absolutely not. If you do the work, I am here for you. She is profitable. She has paid off so much debt. She's closed one of her locations, which was part of our simplifying process. And she had lots of zeros and lots of commas in her business, right? It was such a tangled mess, but we fixed it. And so I think if whether you have $10,000 a year in sale or $10 million a year in sales, it doesn't matter. We can fix those problems. It's just about asking for help and being committed to doing the work. So I want people here to know that you're not too far gone. Like we, we can tackle this and we can do it together. That's so encouraging. And from someone that has been there, like we all need to hear that hope and encouragement. Yeah. Thanks for joining the She Sells Differently podcast. We so appreciate your wisdom and just experience. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining the She Sells Differently podcast. We appreciate you joining. And if you want to leave any fan mail, you can click the link in the show notes today and join us next week for another episode of She Sells Differently. All right, that's a wrap on today's episode of She Sells Differently. Friends, it would be a huge blessing to me if you would take two seconds to rate and subscribe to my podcast. New episodes drop every Wednesday. Until then, I'm cheering you on in your entrepreneurial journey. See you next time. Hey friend, thank you so much for tuning in today to the Inventory Genius Podcast. If there's something that you heard today on the podcast episode and you wanna dig deeper into becoming an inventory genius yourself, I wanna invite you to head on over to my website, sierrastockland.com, where I have multiple ways that you and I can work together on your inventory. I wanna help you with your profit, your cash flow, and your paycheck, because at the end of the day, it's all related to your inventory. So head on over to the website, connect with me, I'll work with you soon. See you then.